All right. Hi, everyone. Thank you again for joining. I hope you got a glimpse of that video and it helped you understand why we're here today for this discussion. Uh, first and foremost, I'd like to introduce uh, my panelists here today. I have Sarah from Feezy Park Farm. I have Matt Smith from ViewSonic. And I have Jonathan from Smesto School. So uh, my first question for the panel today is directed at Sarah. Um, listen, I would just really appreciate if you would tell the audience um, how you got involved with Smesto School and really just tell us the whole story. Okay, um, thanks for having us here. It's great to be here and Beth's been fantastic. So. Um, we started our journey through the EdTech Demonstrator Programme, which is a DfE-funded programme for schools um, in England who can access up to six, 15, 30 hours of support. Um, Smesto made the application to join the programme, and it was great. And the first part of our relationship um, was, was quite uh, re reactive to what was going on. And, and that was a, a possibly two years ago when COVID hit, and we were reacting, we worked together um, to get the remote access out to the children. Our relationship developed and we started to audit and be very proactive. So, so, so it spanned slightly so we could look at a longer relationship. Um, and, and through that auditing, it came out that you've made a substantial investment in, in your hardware and, and, and it was ViewSonic. So, so obviously I've got the industry link. Uh, it just made sense that, that, that staff we found needed a little bit of support with their professional development. Good. Um, it just made complete sense for us to get the experts in, view Sonic themselves, to work with Smesto. Um, so we made that connection for the school. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay, so I'm hearing a common theme already and it's reactive, reaction, react. Jonathan, um, this was a reaction that spurred a relationship with everyone here on the stage and beyond, um, Feezy, ViewSonic, Smesto, et cetera. Um, so tell me, what was the impact of the PD, the first portion of all of this, on instruction after the first training? Um, well, one of the things with the whiteboard training and the software that you did with us, um, it shows teachers how to teach differently. and. Teachers become very reliant on the resources they've used before, uh, resources um, they've gathered for many, many years. And it tends to be from PowerPoint to Microsoft Office. And trying to get them away from that is uh, a big challenge in any, any sort of school. Sure. So getting to use a whiteboard software is completely different because what happens then is you become more flexible in how you teach. Mm -hmm. Just a simple plus button on adding a new, new whiteboard slide which is difficult to do in PowerPoint sometimes, gives you the teachers the freedom to go, I'm not actually going to stick to this 10 or 15 slides I put in a row. I could go off as a tangent. Someone could ask me something different. Mm -hmm. And the training you gave us enabled us as a school to develop that sort of proactive and reactive teaching to what the students needed. Good, good. Not the pizza that was provided. Oh, the or... pizza was great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not for me. I don't eat cheese. But everyone else liked it anyway. So, yeah, it you really don't good. eat cheese. Oh, I don't my eat goodness. Cheese, no. Okay. All right, so with that being said, what would you say Smesto's EdTech approach is? Um, and with that being said, I also know that you're using Microsoft. You um, are using ViewSonic, of course. What else are you using that is um, tech in the classroom, and what is your strategy? So we've, I like to stay ahead of the curve in, in my school. and. We did a lot of work with SharePoint, improving staff communication, staff collaboration, and efficiency with staff to make sure we're cutting down the number of emails because that's you know, an epidemic in schools and as I'm sure it is in any, any industry. Um, so we cut our emails down by about 54% in, in a year and a half. Uh, and the thing with technology is while we, part, while we partner with Feezy is you get so far and then you, you don't know where to go next until you see what it looks like or what it could be, what the vision is as people call it. And so that's... We, we constantly want to stay ahead, and we've been using Microsoft Office, we've been using the, the ViewSonic whiteboard materials. We've also been using the Sends, the camera up there, we've been using that as testing out with students, uh, which tells you about uh, the health conditions of your room, it tells you about engagement and those things. And we've been trialing this, which has been really fun with the teachers who have had a go, and the, the kids really like it, they're obsessed with it actually. And I've become obsessed with light levels now because it measures the light levels in your room and I know later on we'll talk to Professor Stephen Heppel about how that impacts learning and things. So yeah, we've been using those, that kind of technology. That's great. Yeah, it's, it's tough when you follow uh, Professor Stephen Heppel in this situation. He was just presenting and he is brilliant when it comes to 
the classroom environment and how the SENS unit can lend itself to really learning more about making a comfortable learning environment as well as improving upon CO2 levels and things and lighting that you don't really think much about. Um, that's all great. However, I love to ask this question. It's a bit of a dirty question. And this one's for Matt. Um, Matt, tell us about the technical struggles that have been experienced. Yeah, so I think with any uh, sort of integration of technology, it's about trying to find uh, the right balance of what you need for your teaching and learning outcomes, but also what the innovation means for you sort of going forward. So um, by looking at data, we can kind of make decisions. So this is why, you know, the room environment, uh, the engagement levels, uh, the research really behind what we do is, is what actually drives us forward. So, um, you know, these challenges are kind of met with, um, you know, working on EdTech Demonstrator School is all backed by, you know, the, the government's, uh, you know, using a sort of hub of a school to, to support other schools and share best practice. And I think from a, a vendor perspective, it's about really a partnership. So, you know, our, our sort of slogan for Bet this year is, is grow together. And yeah, it's about how we kind of work together and grow our solution around you really. So. The sense is quite an interesting one because we've, you know, we can use data to see what effects the environment has or some of the engagement and you know, maybe teacher training, things like that. So yeah, it's, um, it's definitely a technical challenge, yeah. but we have a good team of development uh, behind us and, and with partnerships like this, we can you know, work together to, to improve outcomes. Good, good. Okay. Um, Jonathan, I remember in the initial training that I gave, um, you had a team of teachers in there that were, I would call them the champions, the tech champions. They were enthusiastic. They were there and eager to learn. What about the other teachers in the school that maybe are nearing retirement or a little bit apprehensive toward tech or just feel like they don't have the time to learn something new? What have been some of your key struggles or... Um, tactics that you've used to get them to have more buy-in? Oh, okay. Um, well, we're lucky with our staff because we're so far with SharePoint and I've, I've used technology to make their life easier. Mm -hmm. They will kind of say, all right, John, we'll have a go, most of them. And what I did is, the champions, as you call them, is, is I do all CP this way. Is I pick the people who are interested first, mm -hmm. they use it, and then I get other people to come and have a look, then they start to use it, and then eventually... Your laggards, as you call them, the people at the, at the back, they start to see the benefits and start to use it ourselves. But like I said earlier, the, the main the barrier is is actually, oh, I don't want to say this word, can I never say it probably, ped, pedagogy? Yes, that right. Okay, yes. it's that side of things from teaching. Teaching yes. has become a very much a very difficult job, and so teachers rely on resources they've used for a long time, and getting to break that habit is very difficult. And in some ways, a soft, new software or can do that, right? But again, it's getting them to understand that it's it's more than putting a PowerPoint on a board. You know, we've got views on it boards throughout. It's more about just import. You showed them how to import a, a PowerPoint that was great for about a week. They all imported their PowerPoint. Then I was like, well, actually, <laughs> if you made your PowerPoint smaller, you can annotate around the outside of it. And they're yeah. like, oh, I get that. So it's about like the, I call it the Ponzi scheme, I suppose, of CPD. You start the people who are interested, and you move down to the next layer, and, and you. So it's not me training them. They're training the next person. They train the next person. Eventually, the whole school will sure. get there. Um, and yeah, no one's been really hesitant of it so far. It's just the changing why you would use a whiteboard rather than a standardized plan template, which is what a PowerPoint is. I suppose. Absolutely. Absolutely. I appreciate you using the term Ponzi scheme in such a positive <laughs> way for building learning. Yeah, it, was, it works that way. Yeah. I'm sorry, but I keep looking over here over my left shoulder because we have our SENS unit um, up on this fellow panel over here. And I'm looking at the engagement levels and comparing what my presentations get as far as engagement levels and what your panel today has been getting. It's just fascinating to see the level of engagement um, ebb and flow in the classroom based on the brightness of the screen or the lights in the um, conference that we're at today. But um, what really matters in this situation, I have to say, is, I'm just going to say it, the relationship building that we've all made here. So, Sarah, if you don't mind, would you just give me a 
few key factors that you think have built the success with your relationship with Smesto and with us at ViewSonic? What have been some of the great things that you've gotten out of it? Yeah, um, I, think, I think we've given each other time. I don't think we've rushed our journey. I think we've looked at what works. We've planned. Um, we've definitely looked at what the needs are of the school, of the pupils, of the staff. I mean, you mentioned teacher workload. That was a driver for us. We know that education and the teacher workload is immensely high, higher than it's probably ever been at the moment. So if we can look at those key areas, whatever the pull is, whatever the need is of the school, and have a look at how technology can help support and address those needs, um, I think you get buy-in from your staff at different rates, but you'll get the buy-in. Right. Um, but then just give it time to, to, to embed itself to really get that push forward. That's, that, that makes total sense. Jonathan, Matt, would you like to add anything to that as far as our cohesive relationship, what the key benefits and key points are? The main benefit for me is in, in education, you are, you're given a role, and those roles haven't really changed since the 70s. You know, you're in charge of outcomes, you're in charge of behavior, those sort of things. The role of IT in a school is, is not a role in most schools, and so therefore the, the expertise you get are very limited. And the only reason I have expertise is because I'm disorganized. So I created SharePoint for me originally <laughs> uh, and then pushed it out to everyone else. And I've just kept on top of things. So pairing with Fees in the Demo Demonstrate program, View Sonic, it, it helps you create those partnerships of giving you insight into different areas where, because it comes quite insulated, I'm the only tech expert really at my school. So without those relationships, and especially like the SENS unit, for instance, I didn't know that technology existed. So it's giving you those avenues and those shoulders and those people to talk to to think about okay i'm struggling with this how do we how do we make it better what can we use what's out there already and it's about making those connections to get that it infrastructure and that knowledge around more schools is a is a great way to do. i'd recommend any school having a partnership with you sonic they've been really good really good. oh we appreciate that and thank you for allowing us to pilot sends and the technology that does vastly improve the classroom environment in ways that I never knew possible, that's for sure. Matt, I'll let you wrap up everything for us. What would you say as the IT perspective, what is a key factor in the relationship that you would need or you do need? Yeah, I mean, it's very similar for me, really. It's a, it's a team effort, so we all have different positions to play and we're all different stakeholders in, in one way or another. So, you know, and it's not just us on stage, there's obviously you know, the IT people and we've got, you know, the, you know, the resellers and the installation guys and the teachers and the learners. So it's sure. uh, a huge collaborative effort, really. And, and, and like you said, it's a slow process. It's not just done in a day. You know, the, these things take planning and, uh, you know, thinking about what you want to do in the future. And, and we're kind of planning for that future. So some of these innovations that we look at are really, you know, looking to the future, like how do we develop this together? and you know, that, that's something that at ViewSonic, it's, it's a real benefit and a, and a positive thing for us to go through that together. And, and, you know, we see the outcomes, you know, and then maybe in two years' time, we'll be doing another talk about, you know, the, the, the sort of succession of what this would be, you know, in a few years' time. So, yeah, yeah it's uh, definitely a grow together um, situation. And, and, yeah, it's uh, always continuing. It never really ends. So, you know, there's always the next, the next step, really. So, yeah, I would say it's team effort and... Uh, Big collaborative projects, and we need we need everybody uh, on the same you know sort of side really. So yeah, that's been really good so far, and we've got yeah more to do I guess. And uh, yeah, being local as well helps because you know it can actually be on site a lot more. So it always helps in that sense. But you know, resellers also help us to uh, you know get inside the schools. It's really about you know actually coming to us and working together with and finding that A team of people that are going to help drive it forward. So yeah, we welcome anyone that wants to to start doing that with us. I appreciate that. Well, we've got a lot of work to do moving forward, but I appreciate the team efforts. And um, thank you so much for joining us today. And we hope to see you back in the booth soon for another panel discussion. Thanks.